Kurt Steger, a professor of biology at Paul Smith College, enjoys involving students in his research. And the rubber band goes on. His latest project is combing the Adirondack Mountains for evidence of Native American activities since the end of the last ice age. Conventional wisdom asserts that Native Americans didn't inhabit the Adirondacks, or at least not to a high degree. The soil was too rocky, the climate too cold. But conventional wisdom may be wrong. Okay, lower away. Recent finds by Steger and his students tell a different story. Looks like you got mud. Okay, let's bring it in so the ball is right here. Yep, there you go. Blah. Let's put it on the toolbox. There you go. All right, now the next thing is let's take those leg weights off. And yeah, we're getting mud on us. That's a good sign. There you go. Yep. Excellent. So the whole history of Paul Smith's hotel and the college would be in this tube of mud right now. So what we'd want to see is maybe at the very bottom, there might be some corn pollen if people were growing it here, or maybe even charcoal if they were burning the forest to make a clearing or camping here a lot. So it looks like we got what we wanted. So the next thing is now we've got to capture the mud so it doesn't pop out the bottom. If you can hold on to that ball and lift this up, we'll get the corks out of the box here. This is where we win or lose the whole project. There you go. So here's where we got to coordinate. This has to go into the bottom before the mud falls out and it'll fall out as soon as you pull that ball away from the bottom of it. We're gonna go one, two, three, and when I say the word three, Tim is gonna pull that ball away from the bottom towards himself, and you're gonna shove that in and cork the whole thing and push it right in to the bottom of the pipe. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> there you go. Yes, push it right in there. Water should come out the top. Perfect. So um, we're gonna snap this off. I'll hold the pipe if you pull the core up and it should come away from the pipe. There you go. There you go. Ta-da! First mud! So this is what Paul Smith is known for. It's about the experience and in this case we're experiencing real research looking into the deep history of this beautiful place. So while other students are talking nerdy, we're getting dirty. <laughs> John Fadden of the Six Nations Indian Museum in nearby Anchayota explains to visitors that 12,000 years before Columbus, people established a presence in the Adirondack Mountains, one that continues to this day. There's an old wives' tale that says that the Indians never lived here. You know, it's like they avoided this place like it was taboo for some unknown reason. And, they, and of course, I believe that it's, that's ridiculous. Just like today, you have to prepare for the winter, for what's coming. They had working knowledge of this environment that was far superior to what we have today. And the flora and the fauna was a lot different. There's like about 70 different plants that grow naturally that can help sustain you. They used to have mountain lions here, they used to have wolves and wolverines, and they ate things that humans eat. And so there was plenty of protein walking around in these woods, not to mention the fish. There's rivers nearby, they're called Salmon River, and they were called that for a reason. There used to be Atlantic salmon that would come up to St. Lawrence and then up into these rivers for spawning. So the people back then just as simply prepared for the winter, they would survive, and I'm sure that they did. And they did, because here I am. Along the drainage of the Racket River, near the village of Tupper Lake, archeologist Tim Messner and SUNY Potsdam students have been making important finds. Each one supports the idea that Native Americans lived in the Adirondack Mountains for a very long time. We spent four weeks at this location, four challenging weeks, meaning every morning you had to paddle in order to get out here. There's bugs, there's rain, there's the threat of thunder and lightning, and things could go wrong. Things could go wrong real quick, 
And the students were great. The students made this experience a successful one. Step one is simply to scour the area, to look for artifacts and to look for where clustering of artifacts occurred. We use that information to kind of guide where we're gonna invest more time. You slowly peel off the layers of earth and you do it in 10 centimeter increments so you can control where things come from. The idea is that archeology span is a destructive process, but we work to minimize the destruction, meaning everything is mapped, everything is drawn, it's photographed, it's recorded, so that way people can reconstruct the site back in the lab. The students found a fragment of a projectile point. So this is the base. It would have come to a tip, much like my fingers are outlining. The style of the point seems to suggest a period of time known as the Archaic Era. It dates to about five to 7,000 years ago. This is a chalcedony, it's a, a chert-like material. To my knowledge, the chert is not locally available. The material tells us something about the connections, where people have been, who they're talking to, who they're interacting with, in procuring the raw material to make their stone tools. The Adirondacks is part of the story, this idea that people have been coming to the mountains and utilizing the resources, the plants, the animals, but also the mountains themselves for a long, long time. And I think what the archaeology is doing is it's helping to tell this story, a story that native peoples themselves have been telling for a long time, that yes, we've been here, yes, this land is important to us, but it's largely been ignored by most. Mm -hmm.